today. Today I'm going to do some no makeup makeup. Now, as a quick reminder, I can't see crap without my glasses on. So I've got a mirror over here. I've got glasses right here, but I have to put them on to see any comments. So if I miss a comment, I will absolutely answer you sometime today. Okay, without further ado, we're going to jump right into it. So I'm going to start with a luminous primer. And I'm going to use my VFX Pro. This is a strobe primer, and it's one of my favorites. I buy a lot of makeup, and I've learned that you can't return everything, which is unfortunate, but there's no reason to keep products around that you're never going to use again. So if you don't love it, just get rid of it. That is my tip for the day. <laughs> So I'm starting out with the VFX Pro. This is gonna this is gonna give me a little bit of a luminous look. And since we're doing no makeup makeup today, I'm gonna enjoy that. So this is probably what I do the most is either just a simple makeup look or a no makeup makeup look. So I know that sounds so silly. No makeup makeup. Now, one of the things that I love to do is I'm, I've started to get these little lines down here and I don't know if it's just from being 55 or if it's from losing weight or what it is but it doesn't matter I've learned that if you take a little bit of your primer and you put it right there helps you deal a little bit better with that so just kind of gives it a slight bit of blurring add some moisture over your moisture of course and makes me feel like it has disappeared so if it's a superpower then I advise doing it so this is going to go everywhere except for on top of my eyelids. And all I did before starting the video was I prepped my skin by doing very little today. <laughs> um, I just washed my face and exfoliated a little bit with a chemical exfoliator. I like to use Polish Choice. It's really, really easy to use. And it's a leave-on. And then I just put argan oil on my face today because... I'm feeling a little bit, I don't know, like I have those days where my feet, my skin just feels wrecked, if that makes any sense to you. Like I can go for a couple of weeks and I'm like, eh, hey, this looks pretty good while I'm looking in the mirror, you know, and everything feels, you know, relatively good and looks good and looks hydrated and I'm using the same products and then all of a sudden like I'll wake up and it'll be like, what in the heck happened here? And, uh. So I don't know if it's just my tragic life or if that happens to everybody. My guess is it happens to everybody. So I'm just applying this generously because it does add a little bit of moisture. And now I have a little bit of a glow. Can you see where I'm sort of a little glowy now? A little glowy. So that has done its first job, which was just to prime my skin, fill in pores, and then blur out a little bit. Hi, Claudia, how are you? So, now that that's done, I'm gonna go straight into my foundation, and the one I've chosen today actually works with the primer. And that's something that I really wanted to say today. You know how sometimes you, if you're a creator, you have things that you wanna say, and then maybe you get them out and maybe you don't, but that's one of the things I wanted to say. So glad to join. Yes, um, you're on lunch. Hi, Maria. Hi, Samantha. So if I don't say hi right away, I'm just blind. I'm just blind, so I'm going to stop putting my glasses on. But but hi, thanks for joining. So if, you're ha if you ever had a problem with maybe your foundation, it separates, or it just kind of looks blotchy, or it just doesn't look right, it might be because you fall into the trap that I fall into all the time. It's where we have favorite products, maybe one's from this brand, one's from this brand. And so they don't really go together as well as they should. So my main tip for today, if this is your only takeaway, is just, hi from Texas. Um, my main takeaway from today is just that if you can use a primer and a foundation from the same line, because chances are they're designed to go together. So these two are made to go together. So that's what I'm using today. And they seem to work well on their own and with other products, but really well when you use them in the same line. 
So, and that goes for hair care products as well. All right, so I'm just gonna get a little bit of this on the back of my hand, which is my palette for everything. So there's my foundation, just a little bit, and I've got a damp beauty blender. And what I'm going to do for our no makeup makeup look today is I, I've gotten into the habit where I like to spray my beauty blender with a little setting spray, and that's gonna set that makeup as we go. And, and I'm just gonna pat it in, pat, 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 and then I'm gonna get up close to my mirror here so that I can see. And that way I can see what it really looks like. And as we get a little bit older, you know, our skin, especially if we are people who try to stay out of the sun now for our skin, our skin starts to get really, really pale looking. And what happens is it starts to look a little transparent. So if you have that skin that's starting to look a little transparent, like mine's looking a little transparent in some places, if you go with just one shade darker than what you would normally use, then it kind of warms up the skin, makes you makes me look more alive. I don't know if it's going to make you look more alive, but <laughs> it makes me look more alive. I have to be careful with that. Sometimes I'll say you, it's going to help you with this. Well, it, it's not going to help everybody. Definitely won't help everybody, but it might, it might. And so it's worth a try. Now, I don't put anything under my eyes. Like, that's going to be last. That's going to be cleanup. That's going to be everything. And this is looking really nice on my end. So, just gave me a little bit of coverage. It's a medium coverage, and I like that. Covered up my most of the discoloration on my nose, which I was interested in. And evened out my skin tone. All right, so that's that. I'm going to go straight into doing a simple cheek and I think I'm going to use my today I'm going to use a cream oh my gosh senior moment right you know <laughs> a cream contour stick and this is just going to bring a little bit of warmth to my cheeks and it's going to give a slight contour so I'm just going to put it right there right there I'm going to use it here and here and I like to use these cream contour sticks when I'm in a hurry because they're just so dang easy I mean you can use them for eyeshadow and everything I'm not going to do that today but very easy to bring some warmth into the skin and you can use it just like a bronzer a nice bronzer and you know all bronzers do not all bronzers I gotta stop this so I can see love the ears you want the ears <laughs> I think I got the ears at uh, the dollar store, the Dollar Tree. But, you know, all bronzers don't have, like, shimmer in them, okay? And uh, so you can get a flat bronzer, or you can use a cream contour stick. There's so many of them out there. The one I'm using is by Kiko Milano. And I'll put all the products in the description later on today if there's something that you think you might want to try. So, I had a viewer comment yesterday that they were hoping, you now I've, I've been over on TikTok for about a year and a half, and they, um, they said something, now how do I get rid of these comments? Goodbye comments. I guess I can leave them there. Anyway, somebody said something like, well, I hope you stay real. And I thought, well, that was really... To me, it was really, really out of the blue. And um, and I was thinking, I hope I stay real too, because I can't even imagine what it would be like to not be real. So there, I just brought a little bit of warmth to the skin with that stick. And then I'm going to grab my pink, my new pink elf blush, which is not on Amazon. I can't believe that it's not there, but it's not there. Anyway, I'm gonna grab this and figure out how to open it. It's very, very pink though. And let me see, where's my little brush? And I'm gonna just add a little bit of pink. Anytime you're doing your blush, if you have troubles with blush, I always like load up my brush and then kind of dust it on the back of my wrist to see 
I, th I guess that's not the back of my wrist. That's the front of my wrist. Hi from Ireland. Hi. And then after I see how it's going to look on my skin, I'm just going to dust it over my cheekbone. Now this is pretty high on the cheekbone and you put it where you feel comfortable. But here's how you can find your cheekbone too, if you're not sure. Roll your brush from here. And then when it goes down, like that's the bottom side of your cheekbone. And then that's right on top for me. And then that's where it goes back in. So when somebody says the top side of your cheekbone, that's where it is and right on the middle and the lower. So the trends will change but if you just figure out where you're happy with it and where you like it, that's all, that's all that matters. That's all that matters is where you like it. So since I'm doing no makeup makeup, I'm going to go ahead and kind of dust this over my nose as if I had been out in the sun, which is, no, no, no I'm not going to do that. I'm not out in the sun without a hat anymore and sunscreen, but I still want to sort of have that look like I was out. A little bit just kind of gives me a back to life back to life look so there we go and I just swoop it up the temple and then I'm gonna go right over where my contour was as well because if I was out in the Sun I would get Sun right here on my forehead and it would look something like that and then I'm just gonna do the tip of my nose and a little, little leftover contouring. Now remember, I'm blind if you just joined. So if you left a comment and I didn't see it, I will definitely, definitely say something to you later. I will definitely say something later. Now, I don't know where my thingy is. Let's see if I got enough on here or two. Okay, this is relatively flat, and I don't know where my sharpener is, so I'm just going to use it like this, but this is my clear lip liner. This one's by Maybelline, and I really have gotten addicted to this. So you go around your lips, and it fills in all those little fine lines around your lips. And like I have an acne scar here, you probably can't see it, but I have an acne scar there, which can really trip me up. And go around the whole thing, work it into the corners if you have those little creases in the sides. And then I just kind of give it a little blend. Most of that went on the outside of my mouth, just in case you weren't sure. There's two of these also on my Amazon store. The one that you dial up, it's so skinny that it breaks really easily. So I opted for the crayon type, which is much, much better. And there's a lot more product there. So once that's on, I'm really just going to do a lip gloss because it's super easy peasy. Just a little bit. This is an e.l.f. lip plumper. I think it was like $6 or something. Pinky. And that's all I'm going to do. Because if I had no makeup on this is how I look I don't know <laughs> I don't know how that works okay and then we're gonna do a quick eye I love quick makeup and normally you know if I was doing this by myself it would be much much faster but when I talk I slow down so I'm gonna use this eye primer by Revlon eye primer is pretty much an all the time thing for me because it helps your eye makeup last it helps it stop creasing and all the good things that you need so just a little bit this one has a tiny bit of color and really this is very pretty if you just wear it on its own when you have you know those days when you just don't want to wear any makeup at all but you kind of want to look a little a little more I don't know polished maybe I'm not gonna say better I'm gonna say polished so a little bit on both and then you just want to give that a chance to go ahead and dry dry only takes a second. And while I'm waiting for that, I'm going to go ahead and do some quick brows. And brows are a very important part of my day, as important as breakfast for me. And I'm using the Brow Trio Kit. 
So I've covered this before in another video, but I like this one because it's a little bit lighter than the other ones that I have. And it looks a little bit more natural. So I've already used this brow stencil. And they send you with several. Let's see. I'm going to use that one. So here's what I have. These are the brand new ones. So they come like, you know, some of them are really skinny like that. Can you see that? Like a really skinny one. There's a little thicker. And then they have, you know, some of them have bigger arches. And I'm going to go for a relatively smaller one today. One that I've never tried, so hopefully this will turn out well. And I've decided on this one. Can you see that? Kind of. The shape. And it's got those little lines on it that kind of show you where you're going to line it up, which is very, very helpful. The ones by iMethod Beauty also have those marks on them now. I really have not got the whole brow thing mastered yet. Yeah, I understand. It took me, hola, Yolanda. Uh, it took me a long time to get uh, the brows mastered. And even so, some days, you know, I think I put them on right. And then I look in the mirror an hour later. I'm like, wow, that's, how did I miss that? But um, the best thing to do is cut yourself some slack. Hi, I'm Marion from Scotland. Hello. <laughs> Don't ask me. Don't ask me. Um, so I'm going to use this pomade that came with it. And it's much lighter than my hair, my current hair color. But when I first got this, I had the blonde in there and it looked perfect. But I think it's going to work for today too. And then it comes with a little stamp, a little stampy sponge. And you just load it up. And then it's a good idea to go ahead and see how dark that's going to be. Hi from Jeffersonville, Indiana. Hey, Jennifer, I'm a Hoosier. And then when you take your stencil and you line it up, if you use stencils, it's got those little marks. You just want to go straight up. No matter how you're doing your brow, you want to go straight up the side of your nostril. Let's get that wrong. That's your nostril. What's that called? The bulb, the bulbous part of my nose. We're going to go straight up. That's where your brow should begin. And then if you go through the middle of your eye, iris, oh my God, I'm so bad today. From, the, <laughs> from your nose through the middle of your iris, then that's where your arch is going to be. And then you can use this as a guideline for where your tail should end. But really, the older I get, I don't want my tail to come all the way down there because if it's pointing downward, it's going to drag my eye down. So I'll kind of cut it off or swoop it out. All right, so we're ready. So I'm going to line this up with the lines that it's got on the stencil. And just do the best I can here. It's all you can do is the best you can. I try to fit my natural brow in there. And then where I have the sparse areas will be hopefully all even. So you just stamp it over. And this is waterproof and smudge proof too. So if you can get this down and you don't have brows, it's really, really cool. It takes a little bit of practice to get everything perfect. But there's one brow. And it's really that simple. It's that simple. So the problem always is doing the other brow and getting it lined up. <laughs> so, but if you kind of learn where your brows are supposed to, so I hate that supposed to, where your brows are supposed to be, then it helps. Where the guidelines are, where the guidelines are that your brows might have been once. How about that? I hate that supposed to be. All right, so this one, I'm just lining up with that imaginary line up from my nose. And I may have to come in a little bit closer. And here we go again. And this stuff actually dries pretty quickly. So if you're going to comb through it, you need to probably do so as soon as you put it on. And then hopefully I got them straight. 
So let's see. Love that stencil. I want to try it. Where can I find it, please? There's actually one um, in my Amazon store. My Amazon store is really easy to get to. Actually, there's two in my Amazon store. Both of them are good. One is by iMethod Beauty, and the other one is by the Brow Trio. And they both come with all the stuff. The way that you get to my Amazon page is just www.amazon.com slash shop slash Camille Cower. So I can spell that for you if you don't know how to spell it. But that's that's probably the easiest way to do it. And I'll put it in the, the um, description later as well. And then I just wipe. I just wipe these off. I give them a good wipe off and then we're done. My skin gets quite high dehydrated and I'm on dialysis three times each week. I'm in my 60s but still love makeup. Any tips or miracles? Okay, so any tips or miracles? Um, I think that now um, with really, really dry skin, it's probably best for you to get a barrier cream. So straight out of the shower, just to keep things really simple, when you're face is still just a little bit hydrated from the water just cover just slather anything that's dry with a barrier cream and that will do a lot for you because what's probably happened and of course i'm no doctor is that that those treatments are just really making you lose a lot of the um the moisture in your skin for some reason and so that's why it's drying you out but anyway a barrier cream will help seal some of that in and uh, there's a great one by Sarah V. And um, if you leave, um, well, actually, your comment will be on here. So I will send you a link later if you need it. Okay. All right. So let me see if these brows are pretty even. Pretty even. Pretty even. And we can always fix them because you're if you if you use one of these. At some point, you're going to need to know how to fix it. So I just use a little bit of micellar water. And they have a really good deal on these in uh, Gar the Garnier Nutrice has a great deal on these. And then a little micellar water on a Q-tip. And then you can just swipe off the areas that maybe don't match. And that's a really simple way to do it. These are fine. As far as I can tell, they look okay to me. So we're going to go with that. And then I'm going to grab my really old palette that I've been digging in and doing all kinds of crazy things in. And I'm just going to grab this color right here. It's kind of like a pinky mauve. I'm just going to grab that color there. And I'm just going to go into where my crease would be if I had one. Now, if you have a crease, that's going to go in the crease. If you don't have a crease, then it's going to go above the crease or above, above where you would imagine your crease would be. And you can kind of feel in there where your eye ends and where your crease might be. So if you have hooded eyes, then you're just going to put it up a little bit higher. Otherwise, you can't see it. And since we're doing no makeup look, I'm just going to go really softly just to give myself a little bit of definition. And I'm going to do the same thing with the other side. Can you see the difference? It's very, very slightly different. Just enough where if I caught myself in the mirror, I'd be happy with it. A little bit of a pinky mauve color. Not everybody can do a pinky mauve, but a lot of us can. And of course, you know, you're going to choose your colors based on your skin tone and your eye color. And I'm going to see if I can find a little bit of a smaller brush and just take a little bit of that color underneath. Because this is no makeup makeup, so we're not going to go crazy. Same color. I'm going to see how it looks under. Just a little bit. Because I feel like I need a little bit of definition under here. So for those of you who are joining me for lunch, thanks for hanging out. For those of you who are joining me for just other things, thank you for hanging out as well. And thanks for telling me where you were from. That's always fun to see where everybody's from. I'm in North Alabama. And then I'm going to use just a tiny 
teeny tiny little bit of that darker color and I'm going to use it right here on the outer side of my lid and I'm just going to swoop it in just like that just a little bit and this is just a little smudgy brush my favorite little smudgy brush because it's so dense and it just applies things just the way I want sometimes. Okay, that's it. And I'll take whatever's left, go right there, right there, and then that's it. I'm gonna curl some lashes. I'm not gonna put anything else on except for a little bit of mascara. And then that's gonna be my no makeup makeup look. Now I have to get fairly close over here to do any kind of bottom lashes and I have a little tiny bit of fallout here. Ooh, I forgot about, I forgot about concealer. I gotta do concealer. That's one of the most important things. All right, I'm gonna do a couple of these lashes on the bottom, just a couple. Just enough to sort of highlight them. If it gets too heavy, I'm just gonna pull it off. Pull it off just just a couple of hairs a couple of little eyelashes i know i call them hairs I bet they are hairs though they must be okay so now i've got a couple on the bottom and then on the top i'm going to use the tip i'm going to make sure that it's not full though even if i have to take it off on the back of my hand i'm just going to use the tip i'm going to swoop these outward I'm not going all the way to the base. I'm just hitting the tips and swooping them to the side a little bit. When I get to the side, I'm going to get a little bit more there. And that's it. Just a little bit to look put together. Nice, easy, no makeup, everyday look. That's it. Just enough to kind of bring some, some focus to my eyes and make them not look so washed out. All right, and then we're gonna do this really cool thing with the, we're gonna do this really cool thing. We're gonna do this really cool thing with the concealer. Let me find my brush here. This is my concealer brush. And I'll show you how I do this. And it really, I don't have any trouble with it creasing up. So we need a clean concealer brush though. So I will, I frequently will just keep my, my cellar water here. So if I have to wash brushes in between, I'll just put a little bit on a cotton pad or Kleenex and then just, just to make sure I don't have any old makeup on there. Just kind of scrub it off real quick. And that way I have a nice clean brush ready to go. And I don't have to go and wash them in between every use. So I like to wash them about once a week. All right, now I'm gonna use my concealer strategically. Strategy. All right, I just put a little bit here. Just a little bit, a little bit there. Now remember, I didn't put any foundation under my eyes at all. And I'm going to use a little tiny bit here, a little tiny bit here. Okay. And I got my concealer brush. I'm going to give it a little spray, work off the bat, the excess of that, and then I'm going to blend. And what will what this will do if I don't put little get little things stuck on my face what this will do is it will prevent that makeup from creasing I just got some cotton things stuck on my eye though and then I don't have to worry about my makeup creasing up and then if you feel like you have to come in here and blend a little bit, 
I just take whatever's left on the brush, and just lightly sweep it under. Because what I've learned is the less I have under my eyes, the, the less it's going to crease up. So that's not going to go anywhere all day. All right, I'm going to go ahead and get a little bit more setting spray to do the other side. You really just want your brush to be slightly damp. You don't want it to be wet. Because if you get that in your eye, it's not going to feel good. And it helps it blend it out. Thins things out. And if you have a quick blending, if you, I mean, a quick drying concealer, then it'll actually allow you to put things in places. And then you can go in and blend them when you're ready. Instead of having to hurry and get it all perfect. All right. That's it. That's my very quick and easy, hopefully, no makeup makeup look. I hope you enjoyed this and I will catch you tomorrow. I post a video every single day. Lately, they've been mostly shorts and they'll probably continue to be mostly shorts. I find those the most fun. I really don't like to get on and talk for hours about nothingness. I can't do it. I just cannot do it. I tried it. I really did. But I can't just waste space for no reason. And until I figure out how to make longer videos without wasting a bunch of space, <laughs> I'm going to be focusing on short videos, even if they're not shorts. I do post every day. So check back. And um, I hope you have a great day. Thanks for joining me. Love and hugs to you all. Bye.